anesthetic free dentals. What are your thoughts on anesthesia dentals versus just preventative care? Preventative care is number one. Anesthetic free dental cleanings are cosmetic. There are very few animals who are going to allow them to scale underneath the gum line. And then if they don't do a really good job polishing the teeth after they do the scaling, they leave etching in the enamel, which actually attracts more bacteria and tartar buildup. So uh, when we do a complete anesthetic dental, one of the most important things that, that is done or should be done and make sure that it is being done is the dental x-rays because we're looking at how much bone loss do we have? Do we have deep pockets down there? There's a reason why your dentist really pushes hard to have those dental x-rays done every year. And I don't have a timeline of when they should get their first dental and how often they should get a dental because it's going to be different for every single pet. Small dogs have a lot more dental disease because they have a lot more genetic issues that lead them to have more dental problems. For instance, my puppy Forrest, who just turned two years old, already had an anesthetic dental cleaning at 18 months old because genetically he has horrible dental issues. There is no amount of anything that I can do at home that will prevent him from needing those dental cleanings. Mm -hmm. And he actually, the tartar that he builds actually causes almost an allergic inflammatory reaction in his mouth and it's painful for him. So he, he doesn't chew anything hard. He can't chew anything hard. So he's an individual case versus my daughter's big dogs again, who are seven or eight years old. They chew on hard things. They don't need dentals. They have great dental care. Their mouths are beautiful. So for those who can and will do dental preventive care for your pets, number one is brushing. That's the gold standard. It's the gold standard for us. It's the gold standard for your pets. However, Avoid most of the toothpaste that are made for dogs because they are filled with horrible chemicals and there are dental chews on the traditional side that have chlorhexidine in them. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be giving our dogs chlorhexidine. So avoid anything with that. Avoid anything that's a rawhide chew, choking hazard. They don't digest so many things. They're bleached with chemicals. So many bad things with, with a rawhide chew, particularly if it's got chlorhe chlorhexidine and other chemi mm. chemicals impregnated in it. There are oral dental products that are sold on the traditional market that actually have xylitol in them. We all know xylitol is toxic to dogs. Mm. Why does a veterinary product have that in there? Be a label reader. Avoid sorbitol. Avoid xylitol. We're, okay, here, have some sugar for your dental issues. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so what I use for brushing is, is coconut oil yeah. is what I use for toothpaste. And then I'll add things to it. So we can add a probiotic, mix that in with your coconut oil to uh, enhance the microbiome in the mouth. I have a dental drop product that has deer antler velvet and essential oils in it. So you can mix that with your coconut oil and do your brushing. There are healthy water additives. There's one called Teef, T-E-E-F. Mm -hmm. We don't carry it, but it's on the market. And what it's doing is fixing the microbiome in the mouth. Um, and then you asked me about a product called 1TDC. Yep. And 1TDC is a fatty acid complex. And really what it does is it decreases inflammation. So it is perfect for somebody like my puppy who has an inflammatory problem going on in his mouth. So it works when you apply it topically in that area. It works to bring in uh, circulation, white blood cells, immune complexes that are going to help decrease the inflammation. Does it help really prevent tartar buildup? Not really. It's preventing that, that inflammatory reaction that we get secondary to the, the tartar. So mm -hmm. for somebody like my puppy, he needs both. He needs um, something for that inflammation, and then he needs my dental drops or brushing um, or whatever else we want to use to keep his mouth as healthy as we can. Although, you know, but you have to look at the genetics. So if you've got bigger dogs that are eating a raw diet or chewing raw meaty bones, you're going to have very little dental care that you're going to have to participate in. Smaller dogs can chew raw meaty bones, but mm -hmm. make sure that you know how to do it, that you are supervising at all times. Um, if you're giving omega-3 fish oils, you need to stop those a week before the dental because they will decrease clotting and you'll get bleeding issues. 
So you need to stop those. So those are little tips and tidbits that you need to know. And most importantly, if you want to help your dog live and thrive as long as possible from experts, click that subscribe button and click the video on the screen 